Hello, Mapsters. Glad to see you. If you've made it to this video, it's because you've been modeling your way through the Haiku Learning site. You hopefully you've done water by now. You've modeled amino acids with Molly Mods, looked at protein folding, and even potentially uh, studied some plasma membrane um, modeling activities. So now you're ready for the fun stuff. Now we're going to start exploring water channels or aquaporins. So in order to do that, you want to focus on unit three in the Haiku site. So that's going to be all about aquaporin structure function relationships. And what I want you guys to do is really explore this as a team because you really are going to learn more if you work through this together and, and take it very slow and, and really kind of play with it because that's what I did when I went through it. I took a long time really trying to look at the the amino acid sequences and see what the, the, the um, important features are of the structure. So what you're going to do is you're going to start out, out by uh, reading the paper called The Aquaporin Water Channel by Peter Agre. So Peter Agre won the 2003 Nobel Prize for Chemistry for discovering aquaporin. And this paper that I selected for you is his presentation to the American Thoracic Society. Uh, he, there are a lot of, uh, there's his actual no, Nobel uh, Award speech. There's a lot, of, a lot of papers out there by P Peter Agre, but this one I thought was really nice because it's a very easy read and it really kind of explains the process of how he was able to discover aquaporin. And as in a lot of really important biomedical discoveries, it didn't happen because he wanted it to happen. It happened kind of by chance, by accident. So it's really interesting that serendipitous findings are very, very common, and they're, they're uh, what is um, the reason for a lot of our most important findings in medicine. And it, you might think, well, that's kind of lucky that you would just kind of stumble upon something. And that's part of it, but really the important thing is that these researchers, Peter Agre was smart enough and clever enough to look at a finding that he didn't expect and really try to understand what it meant. And so many people would look at it and just kind of, you know, continue on their merry way because it wasn't what they were looking for. So it takes a very clever scientist to stumble on something and really understand its significance. So read that paper. I think you'll very, find it very interesting. And then along with that, you might want to look at the video which is an interview of Peter Agre. And you can see what a humble and down-to-earth guy he is from Minnesota. He talks about his, his uh, personal upbringing and everything. It's, it's kind of an interesting video. So after you get that background, then you can start really trying to dissect the, the structure of aquaporin. And to do that, I would start with this paper that you'll find on the site by Murata. And so that's one of the first structures, probably the first structure that was, um, that was crystallized of, of aquaporin. It's the aquaporin um, one isoform. So you're going to want to read through that very carefully. And when you do, make lots of notes. And you might even want to, to use this worksheet that I've added to the site along with it to kind of make some notes on what the key protein motifs are that they're talking about, what are some of the significant amino acids that they have um, that they are looking at. And the way that they decide what is a, a significant or important amino acid is not because early on that they necessarily know what it does, but they know that it's very evolutionarily conserved. So if they look at a lot of different species, they all have these specific amino acids. And then that kind of signals that these are important. And eventually, they hopefully will find out what they mean. But right now, this is early on. This is a paper from 2000. At this point, they're just still trying to piece it together. But as you go through, start making notes about all these special um, parts of the, the protein that they're talking about. So then after you've done that, then you want to move toward the gene map. Okay? And so what I've done is I have given you a PDF of the aquaporin 1 gene map. And what you'll have to do is cut it out and tape it together, and then you will have your very own 
nucleotide and amino acid sequence of aquaporin-1. Now, this is going to be really important because you'll be able to take this information that you've learned from working through this paper and start to annotate your gene map. Start putting in the different motifs. There's certain helices that are important, certain loops between helices. Sometimes there's something called a short pore helix, which you'll read about in the paper. Identify what that is, okay? And then, once you've laid that all out, what I did, and what you could do with this gene map, is to start dividing this up. So you can make two of these, and then one you can actually cut up. So you could cut it up into this important motifs and start to see how they work together to form the actual protein. How do they fold up? Because it's, it's very confusing, but if you can start modeling it with paper and even with a tuber, you can really start to see how it all comes together, okay? So this is something that you just need to do as a team and work through it. And I promise you, the more you work through it, the more you'll really understand how this protein is structured. And once you understand that, then we can start moving into how that structure is critical for it to perform its function, okay? But you really need to spend a lot of time on the structure before we can move to that next step. So one other thing that you might want to do uh, after you've worked through all this is you might want to use JMOL to design an aquaporin uh, uh, 3D uh, simulation of, of this molecule. And um, this is actually something that I designed and then actually printed the, the um, protein by 3D printing. So that allows you to actually take, take what you've learned and really see it in three dimensions, highlight the specific amino acids that are important, and really start to see, that's when we can really start to look at the function of the protein. So that's something that I will put instructions for also on Haiku, that'll come later. But in the beginning, let's really spend a little time on really getting your heads wrapped around the structure of aquaporin. All right. I'm going to let you go and then come back later for uh, another video where we can kind of wrap up your findings and, and add a little bit more to the story. All right, great. Happy modeling.